Hey everybody, uh, this video is to show you how to use the LabQuest 2 data logger. Um, you'll be using uh, this device whenever we do a lab that involves um, gathering data with one of our data pro with one of our probes. Um, it lets you gather the data, uh, graph it, do some analysis to it, and store it for later use, and even send it off to a computer if you need to do some um, really in-depth analysis. All right, so let's uh, let's take a look at a couple of the things on this. Right on the front, we've got our screen that's black right now. I don't have it turned on. We have a couple of buttons. There is a uh, play button, a home button, and a backup button. So I'll send you back. On the top, we have the power button right here, and we have two uh, two areas that are covered by these sort of um, rubbery, uh, flexible like flexible bits of rubber. Uh, if you open them up, this one you see it's got a couple of ports. These are special ports. They're called digital ports and they're used by some uh, types of probes. And over on this one we've got uh, we've got a couple of let's see right there. We have a couple of ports for things like microphones and speakers and an SD card. Uh, we don't usually use that but the digital ports over here we use pretty often. Uh, on this side, uh, here's where you plug in. Here's where you plug in a USB. Here's where you plug in your power. Uh, and also on this edge, looking at the looking at from the back, we've got the stylus. Stylus slides right in there. It's attached by this uh, little piece of string to hold it into place. Uh, the stylus is quite important for. Uh, when you're using this uh, data logger because of the way the touch screen works. You've also got these little clips on the back that will pop up. Let's see if I can grab them. They're a little tough to get. Hold on. There we go. They'll pop right up like that. And when you pop them both up, you can use it as a little stand. Now this is kind of resting. Instead of resting flat down, it's resting a little bit up off of a little bit of an angle, which might be useful for you. Uh, all right. Oh, and on this end, we have another space for a USB connection, and we have three of our three more ports. These are our regular analog ports. The other ones were digital ports. So I'm going to turn this on. I'll just press this once. If this was this is already on in standby mode, and if I was uh, if I was working in um, if, if it was already off, I'd want to press and hold that button. So this is, you may start in this mode where you've got a bunch of apps. The main one you want to use is the LabQuest app. We use this for basically everything. The rest of the apps in here, I've honestly never used. So this is our main one, the LabQuest, the main LabQuest app. Okay, I'll just put that into view a little bit more. Uh, on this one, we have, we have a screen that looks like this. We have five different pages, but in practice we only ever use three. The first one is the just meter page. You can see by this little icon for meter page. We have the graph page, and we have the table page. You're mostly going to stick to the graph page or the ta uh, yeah, the graph page here or the meter page. Okay. Now, let's see how using the uh, let's try gathering some data to see how this works. Right now I've got the Vernier temperature probe. It's this long piece of metal here. Uh, you can put it in or you put it in something to figure out what the temperature of that is. Okay. So I'm going to plug this into the side. This uses one of the basic ports. You can see it slots right in there just fine. If I found this in any way difficult to get in, I'd be putting it into the wrong port. In fact, let me show you what to happen. I'm going to open up the digital ports. Try to put it in. Notice I got this clip here on this side. This is where the metal connectors are. If I try to put this in so the connectors hit, you can kind of see the little clip isn't on the right side. If I try to put it in the other way so the clip is on the correct side, well now the connectors won't touch. Right? They'd be on the opposite side. So it just, to be honest, it just won't go in. Like, I'm trying to put it in right now and nothing's happening. 
they'll only go onto the ports on this side. So I'll put it in any one of them. I'll just stick it into channel one. Click. Makes a nice little click there. And now we can see. Let me try to make sure this is the right way. We can see we've got the temperature. Okay? So this is picking up the temperature. And if I hold this for a bit, you'll see the temperature go up. So you can see it is responding to the temperature. It's giving me the live temperature right now. Okay? Now, um, also on this page, so I can see the raw temperature, I can also do some work, uh, like some uh, setup work on my different probes. Right here, we have an option for meter setup. I can change the units, Celsius, Fahrenheit, or Kelvin. Probably gonna use either Celsius or Kelvin. Uh, set up the meter, I'll just show you what this looks like. For most of your meters, you don't need to set anything up. Uh, the good thing about uh, the vernier meters is the, um, they all generally come ready to go. Some specific meters will need calibration, but we'll have instructions on how you calibrate those. Uh, if something's wrong, uh, your teacher might go up to sensor setup to just make sure that the sensor that's plugged in matches what the LabQuest thinks is plugged in. Uh, so I'm just going to cancel that. Uh, let's see. Oh, over here. This is one you might set up. This over here is set up for how data will be recorded. Most things will be time-based and specific pieces of equipment might need a different mode. Uh, for example, if you're using a photo gate, you'll have this mode. If you are using the, um, uh, the light color sensors, the colorimeters or the uh, spectrophotometers, you know, things that look at the spectrum of light, the different colors in light, they would use the full spectrum mode. Um, drop counters for chemistry use drop counting, uh, but for the most part it's time-based. So I'm going to click away from here. In here you can, th these two are quite important. You could set the rate at which you want to record data and how, for how long. Right now it's at 180 seconds. I'm going to set this to something simpler. I just tapped on the number. I'm going to set it to just 10. And done. And I want to, oh, no. Uh, I'm going to set the rate to something else. I can set the rate higher. I'm going to set it to maybe, let's go with 5 per second. It'll automatically change the interval for you. So it's, yeah, looks like it's okay. Um, there's some other stuff in here. I never really mess with triggering or advanced or photogate modes. This, it's mostly just the duration and the rate at which you want to record samples. The bigger the rate is, the more data you're going to get um, and the uh, more responsive it'll be to quick changes. Um, but it can, also, it can also make things a little bit more sluggish when you're uh, a little bit slower when you're trying to get your um, get your graphs built. Uh, it can, if you set this too high, it might actually make it more difficult for you to analyze your data. Uh, if you set it too low, you might miss changes that are happening that happen you know, more quickly. So I'm going to hit OK, and I can see it's changed over here. Whoops, I just accidentally hit it again. You can see it's changed over here. Let's go over to Graph. Uh, so. Before, it also still shows this uh, live update. Is that still live updated? Let me just double check. 24.2, yep, yeah, yeah, it's 24.2. It is still showing that live updated. I'm gonna just put my hand on this a little bit. A second, I'm making a change. Yeah, a little bit of a change. So that is a live updated temperature measurement. That's pretty good. Now, I can get the measurements of the temperature simply by uh, reading what's on the temperature probe. We're here in the graph uh, page. In the graph page, there is something that we can, we can do if we're recording our temperature. Right now, the temperature is showing up as 24.7. That seems pretty stable, but what if we wanted to get a good idea if that is a nice, steady temperature? and get an uncertainty value for it, and an uncertainty value that's going to be maybe more precise or more, um, more representative of what the real uncertainty is than um, the methods you might normally use. Here's what we're going to do. We can, we're going to collect some data. Now, for some reason on this one, 
there is no digital um, play button on this particular data logger. Most data loggers will have a play button shown somewhere around here. This one doesn't. But what it does have, let me uh, see this here. What it does have is a play button right here. This is a physical play button. That play button gets the um, gets the data logger to start recording and saving data. Rather than just showing us the temperature, it's going to uh, store the temperature. So I'm going to hit this play button right now to see if it looks like the temperature is steady. So play button. And you can see it's generating a graph right now, which looks pretty flat. Okay, Fairly flat. Uh, looks like there's some variation in it, but uh, if you look carefully, you'll notice that the axis has now gone between 24.24 and 24.13. So I'm going to tap this here and see if I can change the temperature. No, nope. uh, graph. Graph, graph options. Nah. I'm not 100% sure how to change these axes, but you can see it's a very small distance between. So it looks like big changes, but it's actually not. All right, so this is fairly steady. And to show that it is fairly steady, I'm going to select the data, all of it, and I'm gonna to go to Analyze. And Analyze has an option called Statistics. It'll ask you what you want to do statistics on. I want to do it on temperature. Okay, and I get the values over here. The minimum temperature is 24.1. The maximum is 24.2. The mean is still 24.2. And the standard deviation is plus minus 0 0.01. All right. So that standard deviation we can use as a measurement of our uncertainty. Normally, I'd say take the difference between max and minimum uh, and divide that by two, but the standard deviation helps to remove some of the data points that shouldn't actually affect our average and our uncertainties that are too far away from normal to count. Now, let's say I've got a run of data. Um, let's say I like this particular run of data. I want to keep it there is a filing cabinet button right here and that filing cabinet button when I press it the run is recorded okay. now I can choose to do another one um, I'm gonna do one where I actually hold it and we'll see how this heats up okay you can see it he being heated up by my body temperature Aside from statistics, there's some other analysis you can do on uh, your data as well. Uh, you can do a tangent line, and the neat thing that this does is anywhere where you drag, you see a line that is at a tangent to the particular point. It's actually working out the tangent at any point, and that's actually giving you a slope over time. Uh, so for this one, I can see that the slope is higher at the beginning. Um, not at the very, very beginning, but pretty soon afterwards. And then it levels off afterwards. Uh, we can, oops, uh, we can also uh, analyze by finding what's called the integral, the area underneath the curve. We could choose between where and where. Uh, should be able to. Why can't I move them? Uh, oh, you know what I probably did? I need to probably turn that off. You know what to do here? Select this and do the integral and yeah 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 I can't actually move the integral from here but I can select an area and try to find the area underneath it let me turn that off another thing we can do we got the statistics we already said um, we can try to do the curve fit that's what I'll do curve fit so quadratic fits pretty well um, so I can go with that one so I have all these different curve fits I can try and I just pick one that I like um, and there's some other analysis ones here. Oh, once I have a curve fit, I can do something called interpolation. Uh, uh, where is the... So we've saved our runs. Uh, let's see, what else do we have to do? Oh, at some point you might want to get rid of a run, or maybe all of your runs. Under the When you tap here for the table view, you get all of the 
just all of the tables. Um, later on, you might need, be asked to do a calculated column, but you can also delete runs from here or clear everything. Uh, yeah, I think that is all of it. All right. Uh, oh, sorry. One more thing you need to know, and that's a pretty simple one. Let's go back to here. Uh, there's some stuff in graph which you should be able to take a look through. Um, striking through data, restoring data, tagging data, da 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 da, or whatever. Um, the more important thing is here under file. File has you know new for new file, but also an important one is save. You want to have it save everything you do. In here, you'll start as with a named untitled. You just give it a, a name and then hit save, and uh, just make sure that that's that it gets to you. Um, It'll save it on this device. When you plug it into a computer with the right program, you can get these saved files. So I'm not going to save this. I'm going to cancel out. And uh, yeah, I think that's it from me. Um, this is how you work with a um, how you work with a LabQuest. Thanks for watching.